MGH is located in a great part of Boston. It really is in the middle of everything. It's a quick walk to the harbor. It's a quick walk to Cambridge. You just have to cross a bridge and you're there. There's a lot for everyone living in Boston. If you want to stay inside, then you can do that, but why would you? You know, you're in Boston and especially for a fellowship, it's a great duration. You know, everyone here is going to be here for two years and so it's not this short little snippet of time. I feel that we have a better sense of camaraderie with our co-fellows because we're going to be with them for two years and so you really find yourself invested in those relationships as well. Everything is open to you. So you really have the flexibility and the support to do whatever you want in that second year. In my case, I am interested in procedures and I'm interested in global outreach and I'm interested in medical education and all these different things. And I didn't have to choose one. I could pursue all of them and I have. Really love coming here to Mass General Hospital. It offers one of the most rounded and most comprehensive training programs there is in North America. Initially when I came here, I knew it by paper, but experiencing it so far has been just amazing. The fellowship starts with multiple introductory lectures, nearly daily lectures over the first uh, one to two months, where world leaders virtually in those fields are giving us one hour lectures, summarizing the newest findings and also the teaching part of uh, each topic. So this is a good introduction. I absolutely love it here. I think it's a wonderful place to work. We see a lot of tremendous pathology, I think largely related to the tremendous services that we work with, with neurosurgery, with neurology, with orthopedics. We have referrals as well as with otolaryngology and diverse pathology that you, you might not be able to see elsewhere. One of the things in general about Mass General Harvard Medical School that draws you in immediately is the name brand recognition. But what you recognize is that there is substance to that name brand. There is a reason for that reputation that the academic prestige translates into academic opportunities. It translates into being in an environment with excellent people, excellent mentors, and excellent role models. And that was one of the main reasons that I chose to come here for residency and for fellowship as well. Actually, my interview with Dr. Schaefer when I was a resident, and I remember sitting in her office and she just said, What can I do for you? And I just thought, Whoa, like not expecting that. Usually it's like, What can I do for you? You know, I would love to be here. We have so many strong women role models. Furthermore, we have women who are leaders in neuroradiology, and they're the leaders because they're good. You know, they, they know their stuff and they have been, you know, they've been motivated and they love teaching as well and encouraging the next generation. The overall sentiment I've gotten from the program is that it's, we're not there to churn out volume and just get the work done and do it as fast as possible and stay however long that takes to do that and then go home. The emphasis is more on taking as much as we can from each case take our time with a report, say some things that we see in a case that are present, what things would a surgeon or the neurologist be looking for that we should specifically say are not present, and take the time to actually make a really explicit report. And you know, we couldn't do that if our goal was just to turn up the volume and not really be concerned about those other aspects that are really crucial when you're in your training program. So all of our conferences, whether uh, educational conferences, multidisciplinary tumor boards, all of that sort of thing, those are all fully remote now. As a fellow, you know, we're sometimes uh, essentially uh, running these conferences or facilitating these conferences. Radiology always plays a fairly prominent role in these discussions and collaborating on different cases and, and that sort of thing. You don't go into one of those conferences and not, you know, even at, at this point in the year, still as a second year fellow, and not come away with a few things that you didn't know about before because you're getting the opportunity to collaborate with all these different clinicians who are uh, and, and researchers who are world-class in, in their field and still being able to maintain all of that in a remote, safe, uh, workflow but still allow for all of that same level of collaboration that's been really cool to be a part of. We're learning a lot from each other. I love being together with them and learning from them. All my call fellows have been super amazing and friendly and we've been hanging out safely of course you know given COVID and everything. Really impressed by how seriously the hospital takes COVID. 
and how seriously they take fellow safety and trainee safety and our concerns seriously as well. What's really amazed me is the ability of the hospital to adapt. While it's presented many challenges, there are many positive that have come about because of uh, COVID and how we've had to adapt to it. I've kind of hooked into the neuro-ophthalmology program. They're fantastic and now everything's on Zoom so I'll go to like their morning conferences where they're doing case reviews and I mean I think of it as learning for me but whenever they have imaging I'll be happy to comment on it or recommend this and this is why we choose this study and you know look at this anatomy here that's what gives me a lot of joy is that clinician clinician interaction. I think one of the benefits of having a large fellowship is that you have so many colleagues to interact with, people who have expertise in different areas, who have um, interests in different aspects of not only neuroradiology but more broadly in radiology education or global health and global radiology that if you wanted to collaborate with someone on a project there there's a high likelihood that you'll find someone else who shares those interests. While reading out with one of my attendings he just asked me about my research interests and I easily got into a research project with him. The ASR grant that I applied for I was the first author but had a really wonderful team. I felt massively supported and also like heart warmed for the support. We have a partnership or a collaboration, I should say, with the first radiology residency program in Rwanda. I was supposed to actually go and spend four weeks there teaching, reading, developing uh, different educational programs. Because there has been this big shift towards virtual learning and interinstitutional uh, collaborations, who can say that like as, as like, in the training, you're in the trenches of a revolution in medical education that's incredibly exciting. This year I've been helping to moderate some of the webinar sessions for the uh, radiology leadership institutes. You know, you can find a niche kind of whatever your involvement and interests are, which is, is part of what drew me to Mass General in the first place. Our co-fellows, including all the mini fellows, have done a really good job of you know, maintaining communication, whether it's on our group WhatsApp or it's through email. Every Wednesday we actually have organized our own like informal happy hour where we basically just all hang out and the fellows will show interesting cases and we all come out and uh, have a nice discussion about each case and it's a very low pressure, low stakes atmosphere. Throughout the whole day we're all texting through WhatsApp about, oh here's a cool resource for this type of condition, here's a cool paper. Of course all the personal type things too, like how did you guys all manage to do this in Boston or what's a great place to eat here in Boston. And so it's really great having that opportunity to chat with all of our colleagues that way. I think Boston is one of the few cities in the U.S. where you can combine the academic possibilities together with the life balance of be it cultural, be it food, be it outdoors activities. We have a high volume of studies to read, but in general, the attendings are emphatic about getting us out on time so that you know we can have time to rest, recuperate, study, you know, be with our families. When our chief fellows make schedules, you know, they, they uh, I think, have that in mind as well. This is actually a very important aspect of fellowship, not just to work, but also to enjoy life. It's been great uh, being in Boston. It's, it's, a, it's a very refreshing, erudite atmosphere. When you go to work in the morning and you just look on the T, the all the people riding with you, it's pretty much all young professionals riding with you and you get to hear like the most highbrow conversations if you just <laughs> are people watching or, or listening in. Boston's an amazing city. It has a medical mecca with three major medical schools and lots of outstanding universities. So there's many opportunities for collaboration for research if that's what you're interested in. Particularly MGH is heavily involved in running the Martino Center, which is a, a major imaging facility that's located just a few miles from the main campus, which is run with the assistance of Harvard Medical School as well as with Massachusetts Institute of Technology or MIT. It's been a great place to network, to make friends that I'll obviously carry away after, after training. Because MGH has had such a strong history of neuroradiology. There are alums everywhere. When we were looking for jobs, um, they, they gave us a list of all the alumni and where they were. You know, log on to the Zoom interview and just have Dr. Levner say, we want you to start an orbital imaging service. And so just as I was saying about putting in an extra year to have your dream job, I mean, this is my 
dream. MGH has definitely put me in a fantastic position. You'll end up in a very good place if you come here.